Hey everybody, this is Rust from Metro Game Core. Today we're gonna to take a look at an external GPU. This one is called the One X GPU. It's made by the same folks that make the One X player handhelds. Now the idea behind these eGPUs is that essentially if you have a device that doesn't have its own graphics card, for example, a handheld PC or maybe a mini PC, you can plug this into it and then it's gonna give you a lot more performance power. And I've covered this idea a couple times on my channel already, and it's always a mixed bag. Sometimes it can create a very good experience, but there are other considerations like the cost and the ability to use it with other devices down the line. And so that's definitely a topic that I wanna cover in this video, but there are a couple things about this One X GPU that I think are worth paying attention to. For example, it has its own internal storage option. So you can add your own M.2 drive to expand your storage every time you plug it into this dock. Plus, this one's got a lot of functionality. In addition to the USB 4 connection, you can also use it with Oculink, and then also it has dual display port and HDMI port options too. And of course, it's got some sweet RGB lighting, which everybody loves. So in this video, we're gonna go over all the good and bad that comes with an external GPU solution like this, and then see whether or not that balance makes sense for you at this price point. We're gonna have a lot of fun here, so grab a snack and drink, and let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, let's start with the most important part, which is going to be the pricing, because I think this is going to be the big sticking point for most people. And as you can see, the One X GPU starts at $700. If you wanna have it pre-configured with additional storage, it'll go up even higher. But for the purposes of this review, we'll stick with the $700 price point because that's the model I'm reviewing as well. And I think the number one question throughout this entire video is whether or not this device in particular is worth those $700. And I think we should start by comparing this against similar products at at least the best that we can. So we'll start with the GPU itself. This is a laptop GPU. It's the AMD Ryzen RX 7600 MXT. Now, if you're thinking that's a bunch of numbers and letters, I totally agree. So let's put that into context. If we go to the AMD website and look at their list of mobile GPUs, you can see that the 7600 MXT that we're reviewing today is the second on the list. So it's not the most high-end model, that's the 7900M, but it's the second one behind that. Now, logically, when I think about one of these external GPUs, the first thing I think about is, okay, well, it's using a laptop GPU, so what are the cost of these laptops that are using the same GPU? And that's where things get tricky, because as of right now, when looking at all of the big retailer websites, there is no laptop that's using the same GPU that's available for purchase. Now, you can find laptops with AMD graphics cards inside, but they vary a lot. For example, at Best Buy, you can find the RX 7900M, which is the high-end GPU, but that's going to cost somewhere around $2,000 or more, depending on how you spec it out. Meanwhile, you can also find some lower-spec GPUs, like the RX 6550M. This one has about half the compute units of the GPU that we're reviewing today, so I expect the performance will be quite a bit worse than what we're going to see here. And it's a pretty similar story across all of the major retailers like Micro Center and Newegg. They all have that really high-end laptop, but there's not a lot in the middle. The only laptop I could find with a somewhat equitable GPU is this one. This one has the Radeon RX 7700S. Now, according to AMD, there is a difference between the S and M models in the 7000 series. The S models are more efficient, whereas the M models are more focused on gaming performance. And so there may be some differences between the two, but at least between the major components, things like compute units and the memory size and type, all those are the same. Even the GPU frequency is very similar. So at the very least, if we're trying to find a similar laptop that has the same GPU, then I do think this Asus one is probably your best bet. Now this one is $400 more, but bear in mind that it comes with all sorts of things. After all, it's a full-on computer. So it's got a CPU and RAM and a display and a keyboard. But at the very least, you can see that if you want to get a laptop with similar performance, you can get this for about $400 more than the GPU alone, at least in this model. But really, this comparison just highlights the fact that the One X GPU doesn't really have that same point. After all, this is an accessory to be used with something that's already established. So instead, let's kind of talk about the circumstances that would make the One X GPU make a little bit more sense. So in this scenario, we're gonna take the Lenovo Legion Go. This is probably the most sold handheld right now that has a USB 4 port. So let's just assume in this scenario that you bought a Lenovo Legion Go like I did for around 700, 750 bucks. And let's also assume that you're enjoying it in handheld and tabletop mode, 
but there's a part of you that also wants to be able to play it on a larger screen and maybe with better performance. And this is where the One X GPU comes into play. It's the same price as the Lenovo Legion Go itself, but it improves the performance on something that you already own. And so it's very circumstantial, but the situation here is that if you already have a handheld or a mini PC and you want to increase its performance without having to buy a new handheld or PC, this is one of the ways you could do it. And the way I see it, it's kind of a half step measure. So let's kind of follow this thread along. We're gonna take the One X Fly as our example this time. This is a handheld that came out last year and it has the Ryzen 7 7840U inside. And that's an excellent chip. It's very similar to what's in the Lenovo Legion Go and a bunch of other handhelds on the market right now. And so really when it comes down to it, there's no upgrade path for the One X Fly. Yes, there's a new chip, the 8840U that's coming out, but all the same, the performance is gonna be negligible between the two. And because there isn't really an upgrade path for the One X Fly, the next best is going to be the One X GPU. Now, going along that thread even further, let's say a few years from now, you're ready to buy a new handheld PC. I'm assuming at that point, we'll see a bunch of new improvements to APUs, and so it might make more sense to upgrade your handheld. And chances are that handheld will also be compatible with USB 4. That means that when you buy that newer handheld, you'll also be able to use the One X GPU with it to increase the performance. So it's almost like going another half measure in the sense that you're now upgrading one of the two components. And so this does give your external GPU a little bit longer of legs in the sense that yes, you can upgrade your handheld and the GPU will also upgrade the performance on that as well. Anyway, that's a rabbit hole I wanted to run down really quickly before we got further into this video, because I think a lot of people are gonna think, what's the point of this thing? And so that's what I wanted to explain first. Now that we have a better idea of the context of when this might make sense, let's actually talk about the device itself. And like I mentioned before, this is a review unit, but all opinions are my own and no money was exchanged in any way. And of note, I had about a month of playing around with this before I made this review. Anyway, inside the box, it's pretty simple. We've got the eGPU itself. And so let's take a look at it first. On the left side, we have our exhaust vent. And then on the opposite side, we have a bit of IO. On the left, we have three buttons, the power button, turbo button, and RGB. When you power this on and then plug it into a computer, the RGB will start. And by default, it's gonna supply 100 watts of total power to the GPU. And if you press the turbo button, it's gonna up it to 120 watts instead. Now, in terms of RGB, you've got a lot of variety. If you tap on that button, it'll cycle through all of your options. And there are quite a few, including single solid colors as well as different patterns. But personally, I just like your standard RGB lighting in a rainbow pattern. Either way, if you'd like, you can personalize it and it'll remember your setting the next time you turn it on. Also on the side, we have two USB-A ports. Now let's take a look at the IO on the back. On the far left, we have a gigabit ethernet and we have two display port and two HDMI ports. You have plenty of video out options. Further down the right, we have our connectivity options. That's gonna be the Oculink and the USB type four. And then finally on the far right, we have our DC power plug. Now the bottom of the device has a slot for your external storage option and it's held together magnetically, so it's very easy to take this off. And this is designed to work with a 2280 M.2 slot. Now I'm filming with one hand right here, so I can't really show you the installation process, but I'm sure you probably know how this works. Either way, I've put in one terabyte of storage that we'll access later in this video. Before that, let's go through the rest of the stuff that's within the box. We've got a quick start manual that will explain all the different components of the machine. And there are some quick instructions that basically say, make sure that you turn it on and then download the latest drivers. Now, the other thing I found interesting about the One X GPU is the external power supply. And this thing is a monster as far as power supplies go, but it does pack a lot of punch. This is a GAN charger that is 330 watts. And that's gonna provide plenty of power for the GPU itself, but then also whatever you hook it up to. Just bear in mind, it is really big, over half the size of the GPU alone. One nice thing about it is the USB 4 port can supply 100 watts of reverse charging, which means that no matter what you plug it into, it's probably gonna be able to fast charge it. And then finally, also in the box, it does come with a one meter USB-C cable. Now, one of the things that One X Player likes to talk about with the One X GPU is how compact and portable it is. And to that point, I think I would disagree because I don't find it to be very portable due to its weight. Now, the GPU itself is not super heavy. It's 853 grams, but you also have to consider that power supply, which is gonna be a necessary component. 
And when you combine the two, it's over 1.5 kilograms. It's about three and three quarters pounds. And personally, I have been putting this in my backpack and taking it back and forth between my house and the studio, and it has been significantly heavy. As a comparison, let's look at another GPU on the market. This is the GPDG1, which I reviewed previously. This one on its own is about the same weight. It's 850 grams. But the thing about this one is the power supply is internal, so it's already inside. So at that point, all you really need is your power cable, and those combined is going to be 956 grams or a little over two pounds. Now bear in mind, even though this has the exact same mobile GPU inside, it does have a smaller power supply. So this one only provides 240 watts of power and the GPU itself only gets 60 to 100 watts of total GPU power. So from a performance standpoint, just making sure you get the most power supplied to your GPU and the best gaming performance, it does look like the GPD G1 is a bit of a compromise in that regard. However, there's a little bit more to this story, which we'll talk about later when we do our actual game testing. Either way, I did want to do a quick comparison between these two because they are so similar. In addition to having the same laptop GPU, the size between the two is not that far off either. For me, a major sticking point is the I.O. These are quite a bit different. The One X GPU has more display out options and Ethernet, whereas the GPD G1 has more USB options and an SD card slot. But I would say the major difference between the two doesn't really have to do with the amount of I.O., but where it's placed. One of my major sticking points with the G1 is where the computer connection ports are, because they're on the opposite side. And like I mentioned in the G1 review, when you plug everything up, it does not look very clean at all, because you have wires coming out of both sides. And so at least for me, when it comes to having a cleaner look, I prefer to have everything on one side or at least on the side as opposed to on opposite ends. And so in that regard, I do prefer the IO layout of the One X GPU. Okay, now let's talk about setup and testing. This is all fairly simple and straightforward. First and foremost, we're going to plug everything into the One X GPU, the power plug, HDMI, as well as Ethernet. And for our first example, we're going to use the One X Fly. It has the Ryzen 7840U, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 120 hertz display. And getting this all set up is pretty easy. You just need to make sure that your handheld is running the latest AMD drivers, and then plug the USB-C cable from the USB 4 port on the handheld into the GPU. From there, it should export your display over to the external monitor and then also give you access to that SSD that we installed earlier. After that, it's just a matter of making sure your drive is properly formatted, then going into your Steam settings and making sure that you have library access to that drive as well. Once you have that set up, you'll be able to install games directly onto that drive to not take up storage space on your handheld. And so you might be wondering why you would want to split your storage between the eGPU as well as the handheld or mini PC that you'll be plugging it into. And it really comes down to the type of games that you want to play in the different circumstances. For example, there are going to be games that work better in a handheld environment and then others that you probably only really want to play in a desktop mode. And my first thought when it comes to this type of setup is going to be real-time strategy games. For example, I wouldn't really want to play Age of Empires on a handheld unless it had a really big screen. And so that's something that you could have only installed in the eGPU so that you could play it in desktop mode only. That way you're not taking up space with this game on your handheld itself. And I'm sure there are a bunch of other examples of games that you would only want to play on a monitor and not necessarily on a handheld. And you can have the best of both worlds here. Anyway, that's really about it when it comes to the setup and configuration. It is pretty simple to get this up and running. So let's go ahead and move on to our game testing and kind of talk about the experience and what it's going to bring in terms of performance. To start, in all of my testing, I played it with the turbo mode on. So we have the 120 watts power of the GPU. So this should give us the best performance possible, at least via USB 4. Now the monitor I'm testing with is only 1080p, so I can only push the resolution so far for most games. So we're going to focus on things like graphical settings and FPS. We'll start with control. We're playing this at 1080p with the highest settings. And you can see here the average frame rate is about 75 frames per second. And as a comparison, when playing this without the GPU, you can expect to get 1080p low settings and about 30 frames per second locked. So we are getting well over double the performance with a higher graphical resolution with this eGPU. Next up is Doom Eternal. We're going to run this at 1080p, but with ultra nightmare settings, which is the highest that it'll go. Now the frame rate kind of goes all over the place depending on what environment you're playing in, but it'll usually be at least 100 frames per second depending on where you are. And so when it comes to a fast paced shooter like this, it seems to work pretty well. If you wanted to get an even higher frame rate, I would drop down the settings to something like high or even just regular nightmare. Now, Final Fantasy VII Remake is one of those rare games where you can actually push the resolution regardless of what monitor you're using. 
So for this game, I did push it to 4K and high settings, and you can see here we're getting a pretty stable 60 frames per second. And also note, this game uses the full power potential of the eGPU. You can see that the power draw at the top right is about 120 watts. Next up is Helldivers 2. We're going to play this at 1080p in ultra settings, and you can see here that we're getting about 48 to 52 frames per second. Now this is a newer game and so it's probably not been fully optimized and then also at the highest graphical settings it is quite power intensive. So if you do want to have something that's more stable like a 60 frames per second experience I would recommend dropping it down to high or medium settings. And also bear in mind I have no idea what I'm doing when I'm playing this game. I went through the tutorial and then have just been playing quick matches and I have been getting my butt handed to me every time. Next we're going to take a look at Destiny 2. Now this one is pretty interesting in the fact that the GPU doesn't actually pull the full 100 or even 120 watts. Instead you can see that the GPU is really capping out at around 50 watts altogether of power usage. To me this looks like a limitation of the USB 4 connection. It's just not being able to push enough data to it. And so as a result the GPU GPU just doesn't get maxed out as much as it could. And it's also a similar story with Cyberpunk 2077. I'm playing this at 1080p with ultra settings, and even with the turbo button on, it never really goes past 100 watts. And we'll dive into this whole bandwidth thing a little bit more here in a second, but before that, let's do a quick audio test. Overall, I found it's definitely noticeable when playing a game, but it's nowhere close to something like a desktop computer. And the overall audio is very close to what the GPDG-1 was, so it's a very similar experience. And for me personally, I didn't find it to be overly loud either way. Okay, next we're going to try a couple different connection scenarios to really get an idea of what kind of performance we're getting with and without the eGPU. For this test, we're going to use the Minis Forum UM780 XTX. This is a small PC that I reviewed previously on the channel, but the thing about this one is that it has an Oculink port. So that means we can test it in three different ways, both with Oculink and just USB 4, and then of course without any eGPU either. And we'll start with the lowest performing category, which is going to be without the eGPU at all. And we'll keep this settings the same across all three platforms so this is going to be with 1080p ultra settings again and you can see here that the average frame rate is somewhere around 29 30 frames per second which honestly is quite impressive given the fact that this is onboard graphics next we're going to do just the usb 4 connection so very similar to what we were doing with the one x fly handheld and because the cpu is almost identical between the two we're getting a very similar performance about 60 frames per second on average and the total gpu power is about 100 watts as well and so performance between the two with the One X GPU seems to be similar between the One X Fly and then this Minis Forum Mini PC. Now things get very interesting when we plug in the Oculink port. And this connection is a lot faster with much higher bandwidth. It's basically PCIe speeds. And so there are two things to note. Number one is the average frame rate is about 90 frames per second. So that's 50% more. And then also the total graphics power is at a pretty stable 120 watts. And so this is what I mean when I say that there's a bandwidth limitation with the USB 4 port. It's not able to use the full processing power of that GPU. And I think the 50% increase from 60 frames to 90 frames per second is pretty significant with Oculink. And so my main point here is if you want to make sure that you get the absolute best performance with the One X GPU, then the Oculink is definitely necessary. Because with a USB 4 connection alone, you are leaving quite a bit of performance on the table. Okay, next up in my testing, I wanted to try out one other handheld. We're going to use the Lenovo Legion Go. And I think among the USB 4 handhelds, this one's probably the best suited for a docked experience. And there's a couple of reasons for that, but the first is the fact that it has its own kickstand, so it makes it pretty easy to prop up right next to your eGPU. Also, the fact that it has detachable controllers makes it pretty convenient to be able to just pull them off and then play them with an external monitor. Either way, I did a bunch of testing with the Legion Go as well, and the performance here was very similar to the One X Fly. So I was getting an average frame rate about 48 frames per second in Helldivers 2, and I also got the similar 60 frames per second performance at 4K with Final Fantasy VII Remake. And then of course to cap it off with Cyberpunk 2077, it was also very similar. The GPU was pulling about 100 watts of power and the frame rate was pretty consistently around 60 frames per second. And so I think at this point you've got a pretty good idea of what kind of performance you can expect with the One X GPU. So let's start wrapping up and talk about what I like and what I don't like about it. 
As always, we'll start with what I like, and I think number one is going to be the fact that it gives you a performance boost. I love the idea of taking a handheld or a mini PC and extending its life by using an eGPU. I also like that this eGPU has a lot of power to it. In addition to that 330 watt power supply, we've got a 120 watt turbo option. But just bear in mind that with many games, in order to really unlock that full power potential, you're going to need an Oculink connection. And that's actually the next point I like about it, is the fact that we have the choice between USB USB 4 and Oculink. I think the Oculink connection is going to give you a lot more bang for your buck, but if you only have a USB 4 handheld, this will still work, which is pretty cool. I also appreciate the distribution of the I.O. on the device, in the fact that it's all just on one side, it makes it have a very clean look. And to be honest, I like the RGB lighting as well, it really added to the overall aesthetic. And then finally, I also appreciate the fact that they added an additional storage option. It's not something that I think I'll use a lot, but I appreciate that they added it nonetheless. Next, we're going to talk about some of the things I didn't like about it. We're going to start with that $700 entry point. Because as much as I love the idea of an external GPU, that price point is about the same as many handhelds that you can buy right now. And it makes it difficult to justify when the price of an accessory is the same as a full-blown computer. Next, I wasn't a fan of the large and heavy power supply. The thing is almost as big and heavy as the GPU itself. And this overall size and weight does make it less portable of an option for me compared to its competitors. Another thing I found limiting was the fact that it only had two USB-A ports. That means I had room to plug in a mouse and maybe an external controller, and that's about it. And given the fact that this works as a USB docking station, I would just like to have more ports so I could use it in a desktop environment. Another thing that I consider to be a negative is the amount of data bandwidth that we are limited to with a USB 4 connection. And it seems kind of incongruent with the GPU itself. This thing can go all the way up to 120 watts of GPU power, but the USB 4 bandwidth with most games won't be able to reach that anyway. And so it's a bit of a shame that you are going to leave some performance on the table if you only use USB 4. And it's also a bummer that there aren't more handhelds with an Oculink connection either. In the end, when it comes to the One X GPU and whether or not I recommend it, it is all very circumstantial. When it comes down to it, there are a lot of stars that have to align for this to make sense. Number one, you're going to need a handheld or a mini PC, something that doesn't have its own dedicated graphics card. You're going to need the desire to be able to plug this into an external TV or a monitor, something that you can play it on a bigger screen with better performance. In addition, it'll need a USB 4 port at the very least, but an Oculink port if you really want to make the best of it. And on top of that, you're going to need $700 to kill to set this up in the first place. And depending on what you're shopping for, you might be able to buy just a whole new handheld or mini PC at that price point. So at the end of the day, it's really going to come down to you. Are you in a position where an eGPU makes sense? And if so, then sure, I could see the One X GPU being a good solution. But for me personally, I feel like there's a lot of check marks that have to be marked first before it makes sense. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Does spending $700 on this eGPU make sense in your current gameplay kind of situation? Or do you think the money would be better suited somewhere else? As always, thank you for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe if you found this helpful, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.